I'm Bob Bell, and today we're going to be talking about a legendary car in the history of the West. All my life I've heard that Tom Mix was driving a custom car on the day he died on October 12, 1940. And wouldn't you know how thrilled I am to find the guy who found that car and not only found it, but restored it to its former glory. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. I'm, I'm excited to be here, too. Yeah, this is so amazing to me. Now, tell me a little bit about what, where was the car when you found it, and uh, uh, where was it? Well, I'd been looking for this car for quite a while, and we owned Cords, so we, we loved Cords. It, and I got a call from a, a friend of mine that it was coming up at a small auction in Missouri. So we rushed out there, and uh, I happened to be going to Europe on business the next day, and I sent my brother over there, and he bought the car. He went straight into restoration, and this is the product that uh, came out of that three-year restoration. Now, what year is that? Well, I bought it in 2010. In 2010? Yeah. Now, he died in 1940. How many owners had it, and how, in, in, how bad a shape was it? Well, it, there was a half a dozen owners of the car, restored to kind of different conditions. But at one point, the car was completely disassembled and laying in a field in California. <laughs> No, so, really? So Laying outdoors? Laying outdoors. Well, it must have been in really bad shape. It was in bad shape. Yeah. I had photos of that, of them taking it out of there so it was in bad shape. Uh, no more interior and things like that. But uh, the guy who restor restored it and saved it, he was really a cord guy, so he was able to put it back to where it was. Now, when I bought it, it looked good from about a block away. <laughs> but, you know, he crashed this in 1940, so he had, there was still a lot of damage. You know, the cow was smashed down and uh, still a lot of damage and it took some while, but we restored it right back to where it was as it came out of the factory. And then we wanted to portray the car exactly uh, a minute before Tom Mix died and he put a lot of things on it. So that well, was a fun part. So let's talk about that. Now this is what, if, for starters, it's a custom car. There was only like a couple hundred made. They were handmade, is that true? Well, almost all those, all the cords were handmade because they didn't produce very many of them. Yeah. And they, this cord model only served, was, excuse me, only made in 37, 36 and 37. Got it. And there were only 96 supercharged cord phaetons. Now, uh, he put on all these custom items which you restored. How many are there? I've heard 12, I've heard 18. Is it more than 20? I think there's 20 of them, you know. And, and give us an example of some of the bizarre, or not bizarre, crazy things that he put into this car. Well, on the front of the fenders, where you'd normally have a splash guard, yeah. Mix was such a showman, he had leather made for that with his brand in it. Wow. And I, I got to tell you, that any show or any place I take it, that's the first place that people go because they've never seen leather on a car like this. <laughs> leather on a splash guard, that's fantastic. <laughs> I know. And I found the original leathers in an attic in California. So um, we were able to find almost everything and uh, either reproduced it from that or uh, like take these medals on the car. Yeah. On There's the, two of them on the hood. On the hood, yeah. Yeah, well, Tom Hicks was in Europe in 1939 and the King of Denmark gave him those medals. And so he put it on his yeah, car. Yeah, he just screwed holes in it and he put it on the car. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you match that? How did you match the medals? Great, great story because I found them in a museum in Oklahoma and they let me take them out and recast them. And so then it was just a matter of chroming and painting to match, but they are an exact duplicate of what Tom Mix had on the hood. Now, uh, even the accelerator has his name on, on the does. accelerator. And what other item? What's that item at the bottom? Well, there's a silver cup for your boot. Oh, so his boot could fit yeah. in, in there, I, the accelerator? I, I can testify your boot fits right in there. And he had Tom Mix, uh, you know, on, on that leather cover. So he... He also put a gun in the car. Well, now let's get to that. That to, yeah. me, is, that to me is the holy grail of what we're talking about here. But uh, now one of the eyewitnesses to the crash, uh, he passed them uh, on the road to uh, Florence. Right. And it was a dirt road. Mm -hmm. And they said he blasted a siren. He had a siren in this for like a police siren? Oh, he did, yeah. And he was an honorary deputy sheriff in California. He was an honorary... Uh, uh, Texas Ranger. He was an honorary fireman, uh, so he was able to use this uh, siren. And I found that siren in the same attic in California that I found the leather. And so you think it's authentic? 
I know it's authentic. Oh, you're thinning. Because I have, I have original photos of the siren, and so we restored it back to where it was, now, and can, it works. Can we blast it up here oh, in a sure. few minutes? Okay, oh, yeah. I want to hear that. Okay. Oh, yeah. And the second part of it is, I believe in their testimony, the couple were in their car, and imagine you're, you're going 40, and you're talking about crops and stuff, and in your rear view mirror, you see this rooster tail of dust, and here comes this crazy car that, by the way, is cigarette yellow? Is that the cream? Cig cigarette cream? Can you believe the factory named this car Cigarette Cream, the color? That's the color, Cigarette Cream. You wouldn't cream. do that today. No. Cigarette Cream. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So they see this maniac coming up behind him mm -hmm. at uh, estimated 80 miles an hour. Right. All right. He passes them with the siren. Yeah. And then he's got this weird tail light that swings. It's called a wig wag light. That's <laughs> another me, crazy thing. Tell me about that. Well, that's a 1937 Studebaker option. So Mix just grabbed it from a Studebaker and had it put on his car. And what does it do? Well, when he hits the brakes, it wigwags back it like wig a wig wags. Yeah, like a railroad sign. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. All right, so let's get to the holy grail here. Tom Mix had a holster and pistol custom made for the steering well. Tell me about right that. under the steering column. A lot of people think it's an emergency brake, but it's, it's really handled on the gun. The gun's a really neat story because it was in the Tom Hicks Museum in, in Oklahoma. And about 15 years ago, some teenage kids got in and stole a bunch of guns. Oh, man. Yeah, and so they had that, that gun with his uh, TM on it on one side and mix on the other. Yeah. And guess what? They're probably sitting there looking at that gun and, and they said, we can't sell this gun. And so they filed it up. Oh, <laughs> God, I hope so you can just, In a museum, you can just barely see that. But I found a book uh, published in the 1950s, and it showed a picture of the gun. And so we found a, a gun that was similar, which is a very unique Smith & Wesson uh, that they only made a very few of that Tom, was, Tom Mix had. And we simulated the grips and put that on there. And now, uh, didn't his daughter testify or, or tell a story about how he would be driving down the road with her in the car, and he mm -hmm. would just reach down, pull up the pistol, and start shooting at rabbits at 80 oh. miles an hour? Well, she got, she, <laughs> she'd get mad at him all, all the time, <laughs> because he'd say, take the wheel, take the wheel. And by the time she'd reached over and grabbed the wheel, he had that gun at shooting at anything he could think of. So, that is fantastic. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the last seconds of his life. It's a little unclear to me, or it was, that uh, he's on a dirt road, and it's a straight shot. Mm -hmm. And he can see to the horizon, but he doesn't see an important missing element. I, I is my theory. Yes. And yes. and what was what was that missing place? Well, it's just uh, it's here in Arizona, and it's now called the Tomix Wash. So there's a big question of how he did that, and I can only say how he missed that. Yeah. I can only say you know he was up to two or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, with the band that knew his wife yeah. in uh, Tucson. And he was known to take a nip or two, obviously. Yeah. Um, well, he allegedly took a nip or two on the road trip, if you believe the people in Oracle Junction. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. And I, I believe that. You know, yeah. he, he drank some. And later in his career, he actually drank more. Uh, I don't know if it's any different than any other entertainer, but, no. you know, I think all those factors can come to play. And he's just roaring down that road toward Florence, and he just misses it. He misses what's going on up, up. They had to have a barrier in front of the Well, let's tell bridge. Let's, let's stop for a minute. Uh, they, they, were, they were rebuilding the bridge across the wash. Correct. And so my theory is he's driving 80, and he looks, and it, the view goes right across. You, don't, you can't see down. Right. Now they claim, uh, and at the last possible second, he sees it, but he's going 80, and he spins, and it's, some said he was standing up, and he went into the wash and it flipped mm -hmm. over, and the suitcase killed him. Right. But, um, it's controversial as to, uh, was there a warning sign out, and do you believe that? You know, it says bridge out, slow down. Well, you know, this is 1940s, so I, I could see that there wasn't a sign out there. You don't think there was? I don't think there yeah, was. Nobody's ever, their, their nobody's ever testified to that. Well, I thought, I thought one of the, uh, the highway people who was working on the bridge uh, said, we heard this roar, and then he blasted past the first warning sign. Did I make that up, or is that a real thing? Um, I, I seem to remember reading that. I, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. But and, and how close that was to the bridge is a big question. Yeah. And my theory is, okay, you had a couple nips. You're going 80. It looks straight. Yeah. You don't see the indentation. Mm -hmm. And then you see the sign, which they probably put out 
you know, 15 feet from the bridge because everybody that's, drove up that's to my it guess. 20 miles. You yeah. know, they went, oh, okay, that's honey, and guess. they went down in the, yeah. in the ditch. Well, see, this car out of the factory could do 110 miles an hour. Wow. I've driven these cords at 70, 80 down the highway all the and time. And what does that feel like? Oh, it feels like fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's great. And I, I found a lot of evidence that people said that he drove real fast. Sure. And I can see that. You know? yeah. Big yeah. cowboy started like that. Uh, in a in a in a very powerful car, the car had super, was supercharged, and so it went fast, and he went fast. Yeah. Uh, and everybody said that. So, you know, he did come up on that. And then there was a, a worker on the bridge that testified that he came out finally, tried to wave Mix down. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Uh, but it was too late. He was going too, too it fast. It was too late. Yeah, yeah. It was too late. And now, he, have you heard the? Uh, Testimony that uh, Mix saw too late that the bridge was out. Mm -hmm. He, they said he stood up trying to steer it, it convertible, the tops down, mm -hmm. and he stood up. Do you buy that? I buy that. Yeah. Yeah. The reason being that he's going that fast. I mean, if what would you do? You'd stand on those brakes too. Yeah, right. Right. He always drove with the top down. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And uh, if you look at the crash photos, he just, he must have hit the brakes hard, skidded over right there and, and fell down, upside, the car upside car down. car flipped upside yeah. down, yeah. And then he was flipped out. Yeah. And uh, these Halliburton suitcases that he had. Now this isn't Halliburton, the, the, the Iraq war people who did the, art, the ammunition? Uh, it, Is it's a, it's a family name. It's a Halliburton, so, so a Halliburton yeah. suitcase was packed behind him and as he tried to stop and went into the wash, mm -hmm. the suitcase came forward and broke his neck. Is that, that correct? Is correct? That is correct. That is just crazy. Uh, that's what everybody has testified to. And if you go to the museum in Oklahoma, the Tom Mix Museum, they have that suitcase and they will point to you, that's the dent <laughs> that that's killed Tom dent. Mix. That's the dent. That's the suitcase that that's, killed Tom That Mix. is the suitcase, yeah. Wow. And they were, this Halliburton uh, pre-39 were really heavy metal suitcases. They weren't light, yeah. so uh, it's a very plausible story, yeah. and that's what they testified that Mix hit soft sand, but that suitcase smacked him and, and did it. And of course, today, uh, Tom went next wash. I had one wag tell me, isn't it amazing that he died in a wash named after him? And <laughs> that's a crazy <laughs> breath. I know. But it's a Mecca. You have to yeah. go to the Tom Mix Memorial near uh, south of uh, Florence, Arizona, and you've been out there, obviously, many, yeah, many with, times. with the car. Now, have you been in the wash to see if it, it gives up any clues? I've been in the wash, and uh, I, I, I read accounts where people have gone in the wash hunting for certain, certain things. Yeah. And uh, I know that Neil Hayworth, who restored, restored this car once, um, he had a friend that went into that wash and found a hubcap off the car. Wow. So, but today, you know, everybody's been there, everybody's seen it, so I don't think you're going to find any artifacts today. Yeah. Now, what got you interested? Were you, were you a Tom Mix fan growing up, or is this something that came to you because you're a car nut? Well, it's kind of both, but I grew up about 30 minutes from the uh, 101 Ranch Wild West show. Yep. yep. So I collected their stuff all my life, and Tom Mix got a start there. Yes, he did. He left there in 05 to start doing movies, so I knew all about Mix, all about the 101 Ranch. And my wife and I went to a car show, and I saw a cord. I have never seen a cord, the art deco look of a cord. Yeah. And we said, you know, when we make it, we need to buy a cord. Now, some people say when they make it, they're going to put a swimming pool in. Yeah. Not us. Not We're going to buy a cord. We're going to buy a cord. <laughs> so I love cords, 101 Ranch, Tom Mix, and it just all came together for me. Now, what is this? Uh, I, I see this in print, and I don't think I've ever heard it out loud. It's called a cord phaeton. Yeah. It's called a phaeton. F -P and what is P H well, A E T O A? They, what, is, what does that mean? Well, uh, there are wagons that were called a phaeton also back uh, oh, in, in the day. In the old west days, in yeah, a wagon? Yeah, and that's how it came about. Uh, basically, it's a convertible with one seat. One seat. I mean, yeah. two seats. The phaeton has two seats. Yeah. So it's just the name that they uh, adopted. But there are many cars that use that phaeton name because it was indicative of a two-seat car convertible. You're driving down the road. Ever feel the ghost of Tom Mix? I think Tom Mix is there all the time because he would love what's going on with the car. Yeah, he was because a showman. It's not just the car, it's Tom Mix. And we had it in the Arizona Concours uh, just a week ago Sunday. And every show I've ever been to, people mobbed that show, car. I've seen 100 people around that car at one time. But they mobbed the car because it's just so interesting and the history 
And I'm a hist Western historian. I love the history, and I know you do too, of course. Yeah, yeah. But they just liked that whole idea that this was Tom McCarr, and he was the, you know, in the, in the teens, he did, over, he did, well, he did over 300 movies, but in the teens, he was the highest paid actor in Hollywood. He made $17,500 a week. But he yeah, was before the, taxes, he didn't he, put taxes, that yeah, before. If he paid them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, so, um, you know, it just all came together, and, and we're, just, we're just so happy, happy with it, you know. Well, you and I have more than one thing in common, okay? We both love cars, all right? We both love history. But you and I, when we were in our teens, were drummers. Yes, that's right. You were in a band. What was the name of the band? Aristocrats. I was in a band called The Exits. Yeah. And what's the one song that you got the most requests for? Don't say the name. Let's play it on here. Oh, you ready? You ready? 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 Go. Wipe out! Wipe out! <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a killer. Yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beauty, man. It's a privilege to be in the damn thing. Isn't it fun? Oh, jeez. It's crazy. This yeah. is the car he drove. I know it. So, of course, Tom had Tom Mix had the best sports car of the day. It's a uh, great design. It's a long hood, sits low, um, all kinds of gadgets on it. Yeah, I noticed the shifters uh, at your fingertips. It's not on the floor like I thought it probably would <laughs> yeah. be. Uh, but I really uh, am impressed by the sound. It's got a roar to it, a little more throaty than I was expecting from something from 1940. Yeah, well, that, that's good, you know, and it's got a uh, supercharger, and that, that makes it a little bit of an extra sound to it also. I just love driving the car. It's so much fun. And when a Tom Mix fan gets in this car, oh, they're in heaven. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> Absolutely I, heaven. I, when I think that this is the car, I, I, it's just thrilling to me, and uh, man, he it was really ahead of his time, wasn't he? He was really uh, oh pushing gosh. the envelope on uh, what a car could be, and he wanted one, and then he uh, he certainly used it at full speed, didn't he? Oh, he did. He drove fast all the time. I've documented that before, how fast he goes, so uh, no wonder he missed that bridge and, yeah. and flipped over. Now, have you heard about, he had a previous wreck, I think the year before, and they had to, he was in a, a raging river, and they had to get a stick to, to, to try to pull him out. Have you heard about that one? He almost died the year prior. I never heard that story. That's yeah. interesting. We're going to cover that in True West. So. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we, yeah. We've uncovered all kinds of uh, uh, anecdotes about his driving, about his, uh, whoa. <laughs> Here we the go. baby turns, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Takes a little bit more radius than today's cars. Yeah, yeah. So what did he pay for this brand new? Did we know? Right at three thousand. Yeah, About three thousand dollars. And what would an average car went like a Model A probably at the time was like how much? Five hundred thousand? Five hundred at most. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, it gives you a newfound appreciation as far as steering it and what would happen if he was going 80 miles an hour and how hard it would be to stop it that i, I certainly have a first-hand feel for that sitting in the car well if you've ever driven the 20s 30s 40s car without power steering yeah it makes a huge difference yeah yeah it's like a tractor it's like driving yeah. a john deere really and they needed these big steering wheels to make those turns yep yep That would have been quite a trip that he made from from New York all the way uh, down to Arizona, and he was, of course, heading out to L.A. He was visiting a, a son, an ex-son-in-law by the name of Knight uh, in the Florence area, and then his daughter at the time lived, lived in Phoenix. So that was his destination there. We don't know anything past that point. Yeah. Now, I'd heard that, or I, somebody supposed that he was trying to get livestock for his South American tour, and Florence is well known for as a livestock center, and I wonder if that was the motive to go see his ex. I bet it off. was. I bet it was, yeah. yeah. And he was, at night, was a uh, uh, rodeo champion himself. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, he wasn't the one that he disowned his daughter for being with a rodeo bum, was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, that was, you know, she got married at 17 and... This is Tomasina? 
Uh, now this is uh, Ruth. Ruth. And uh, and uh, he disowned. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure he disowned her, but he cut he her off. He wrote her out of the will. It, yes, it, yes, that's it's pretty true. serious. That's serious. And he also cut off her allowance. He was still giving her allowance, so she sued. Oh, that's nasty. She sued. I know it. While he was still alive? Yeah, well, like immediately. And uh, Tom Hicks won the case, but he, in a year and a half later, they were reconciled, and she was riding to the circuses with him and performing the circuses. So uh, they were. They were able to work that out. Uh, plus, the bum didn't didn't work out of the husband. So, so he called that one. He he, yeah. he knew a bum when he saw one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knew a rodeo bum, it would be him. It would have been him. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. So he saw something his daughter didn't see. Well, he'd been married five times too. Yeah. Uh, in total, so he knew a little bit about marriages. Now, or maybe you'd say he didn't know a whole lot about marriages. Well, having gone through five. Yeah, I think there's a. Uh, an issue with celebrities and you know you, everything you gain you lose something and your greatest strength is your greatest weakness and i think he was so handsome that he uh that became a liability on in terms of uh temptation all right so we might as well record this absolutely yeah so here yeah. we are bobby two drummers two caught, drummers caught in the middle of nowhere nowhere driving a famous car we're driving a famous <laughs> car that's as messed up as my 1957 Austin Healey, which would do this all the time. Now, wait a minute, that's a British car. I know. They were always but... messed up.